Hello everybody, my name is Eric. Something that was actually requested in the comments of my every type of malware video was boot kits. And as it so happens, there's a pretty big boot kit that's in the news that we're going to take a look at today. This is called Hybrid Petcha. Petcha, not Petcha, copycat. Uh, they're calling this with a secure boot bypass. So this is a UEFI boot kit, which is an uncommon type of malware. Now, as the name might suggest, this is similar to a root kit, but the main way that a boot kit works is it will actually infect your bootloader, right? And here's an older example that Malwarebytes has on their website. And it'll, it'll, you can tell this is really old because it's talking about using uh, euros and a voucher rather than cryptocurrency. But that is the same idea. So a bootkit is stealthy because it installs in your bootloader and in some cases even reinstalling Windows because that doesn't always delete the EFI partition, it might survive. Many are ransomware style bootkits, but there can also be other ones that modify permissions. Today we're looking at a ransomware one that is modern and also uses this vulnerability to bypass secure boot, at least in some instances. So what ultimately happened here is there's an EFI program called Reloader that was able to be used as the beginning of a chain where unsigned EFI code could be executed. The reason this was possible is because the way Secure Boot works is it requires EFI applications to be signed in order to load them. And the signing is done on a trust system. This is also why for Linux users, Secure Boot is generally a nuisance feature that you disable. Because most Linux distros, especially if you need to load proprietary drivers, may not have the right signature. So this has been named as such because they used the name NotPetya new.exe, which is connected to NotPetya. NotPetya was a bit like the classic malware, it was destructive. And then there was Petya, which was ransomware. NotPetya new is another case of ransomware that is otherwise similar to NotPetya. So that is why they are calling it hybrid Petya. Now, as they point out, it's not entirely clear whether hybrid Petya is intended to be exploited or is simply designed by a security researcher, but it does have some ransom screens in it. Now let's head on over to AnyRun and try these out. So we have two different uh, files, samples here. This is the first one. Uh, both of these were initially discovered by ESET Research and then uploaded to Malwarebazaar where I acquired them. So this one I'm calling Petcha install.exe, and this one behaves somewhat like a typical ransomware. So we ran it, Nothing looks off, and in this instance, this one seemed to just encrypt our files. Now you could tell if you looked, uh, all of what should have been our text files uh, are now binary files, which is one red flag, a massive entropy, and they are just no longer human readable because they're encrypted. Now we can see, oh, your encrypted files are encrypted, your important files are encrypted. If you see this, then your files are no longer accessible because they have been encrypted. Perhaps you're looking for a way to recover your files, but don't waste your time. And then they proceed. So this was the first sample, and this looks like a pretty typical ransomware attack. So then we'll show you the second file, which I thought was a bit more interesting. Now this one was shipped with a name that would make you think it was a Malwarebytes update, or I renamed it in my sample folder. We're going to give this quite a bit of time because it's pretty slow. Now make it public. And let's see what happens when we run this. So, the executable has just launched, and that's weird. The computer just suddenly blue screened. Now let's see, uh, is that a... Did I read it right? I'm not sure that was a real uh, blue screen, uh, but ultimately the system reboots, which is the objective here. And already it has created the your files are encrypted.txt, but it hasn't done a lot else. And then the system reboots. Now this repairing file system C, the type of file system is NTFS. Uh, so this is actually the bootkit running. Now in order to get a better overview, I'm actually going to move uh, to another VM where we're gonna run this directly on the virtual machine so we can see exactly how, how it works. Okay, so now that we've uh, got Windows Defender off on the VM, we're going to run this. And let's see what happens. So we just run the file, and of course it will ask for admin privileges if you grant them. I have a feeling, oh, I think it just executed. And now we're getting the false check disk. Now because this uh, 
VM is running on an SSD, it goes faster than it did on the sandbox. So we're going to see what happens when that's gone. And then what I might do is boot this up with an Ubuntu Live DVD so that we can see what exactly happened to our file system. This is actually the VM, if you remember my how to remove malware for free video, this is the VM that that was used for. We don't need it anymore. Did it just re... Oh no, I, I think it said something different before. Well, we'll check. If it, if it does that again, we're just going to reset. And it is a file encryptor. Because in the original boot kits, like I showed you at the start of the video in that Malwarebytes article, oftentimes you could simply fix the problem by replacing the boot sector, but here that's not going to help because everything has been encrypted. And unlike a lot of ransomware, which just encrypts the files that you use, uh, this also will encrypt your program. So there is no using this Windows partition ever again without a, without a reinstall and hopefully a recovery of your data because it's gone. Oh, and it rebooted after the second go-round. And there we go. Oops, your important files are encrypted. If you see this text, then your files are no longer accessible because they have been encrypted. Don't waste your time. Nobody can recover your files without our decryption service. We guarantee all you have to do is pay them a thousand US dollars worth of Bitcoin to that address, send them your wallet and your personal installation key to that scam email, and then they will give you a key. And we can test this out by entering something random in here. And yeah, it, it won't work. It does have validation, and that's actually, as far as the victim is concerned, good, because if it didn't, it would just, it would probably wrongly decrypt your files and just ruin everything. Now let's boot Ubuntu and take a look at what the disk looks like now. Because I am curious, how much was encrypted? How much could potentially, like, I know all of your data is going to be gone, but if you use the technique I showed you in the other video about naming your files.exe, I don't think it's going to help you here because most ransomware runs in user mode, but by running in the bootloader, the ransomware goes much deeper. The only good thing is presumably this would not encrypt a network backup. Now we can choose try Ubuntu, and then we're in a live environment. So now let's see what's going on. Dev SDA3 should be... That's not a good sign. In our partition manager. Seems like it's not going to play ball with us. And that could purely be because of the fake blue screen of death. But we can mount the EFI. Because sometimes when a computer crashes, you lose some of the data. So let's take a look. So we got boot, Microsoft boot. Now this variant will not have the secure boot bypass, but we can upload this to virus total just to see if this is not quite right. The fact it was unseen was an immediate red flag to me because a legitimate Windows file is probably not unseen. And then we can see, oh, yeah, that's a fresh ransomware. Or that's the that's the EFI file it creates. And here, uh, this would appear to be the old one. I doubt we're going to find a lot uh, plainly, but we could try just running strings on this just to see if there's anything obvious here. Incorrect key. Please try again. Please reboot your computer. Yeah, so we've actually got the malicious payload here. And some compile strings as well. And here we go, in all of its unobfuscated glory. It was packed inside the binary, but of course if you just ran the malware, they, at that point you've kind of, they, you've got it. Uh, so, oh here looks like the decryption functionality. So this, I'm guessing, I'm not sure if this is just, I'm sure if this is the main function or the uh, ransom function. Let's trace back up. You know, it looks like this is basically the main function here. So it will open its config, and from this it will be able to get its status and everything else. Now this function is used uh, to write everything. Now this is the uh, encryption scheme. So this is while the encryption is running. This is displayed on screen. Now here we have the uh, encryption and status loop. And after that, oops, your important files are encrypted. So that's basically how the scam works. And then here is the decryption and repair code. So it does all of the decryption up here, and then down here is how it fixes the bootloader, as I had noticed uh, in that. Uh, so by renaming .old back to that, and 
dealing with boot x64. We can see there's some sort of function here, but we haven't quite got the pointer recognized correctly. And then it writes on screen, please reboot your computer. And then it just waits indefinitely. And here are just strings. There's really nothing else super interesting here because the malware simply encrypts and decrypts files using a Salsa 20 algorithm, so there's nothing else really to show. So that's going to be all for me for now. So this is an interesting case of a bootkit. In my opinion, bootkits, other than like really stealthy state-sponsored schemes, APTs, they're probably, they're, they're one of those things that are more interesting and academic than they are necessarily useful in real-world campaigns. You know, it's obviously very scary because the thought that something can be installed in your bootloader undetected, scary. Do, is it something I worry about a lot on a day-to-day -day basis? Not really. And I think there are some drawbacks for this type of a campaign. Like, a regular ransomware could also traverse your network shares and anything else. This is going to be more confined to what's on the local computer. Still quite devastating and technically interesting. So that's going to be all for me for now. Bye.